you are joining me today uh, to look through all those are the Times columnist Megan, Melanie Phillips and uh, the uh, columnist and broadcaster Steve Richards. Uh, well, uh, nice to see you both. Let's start with Scotland. Uh, and uh, who do you think's got it right on this whole question, the breakup of the union? Uh, Robert Shrimsley, who's uh, pretty gloomy that it will happen from his perspective. And Alan Cochran says, no, there's plenty still to fight for. Who do you agree with, Melanie? Well, I tend to more to the Cochrane view. I think there is plenty still to fight for. I think that once the Scots actually concentrate on what they have to lose uh, from uh, severing themselves uh, from England, uh, I think hard reality will kick in. I think the problem has been that the case has not been made. And um, as, as your political correspondent said, uh, the problem actually is Boris himself, because Boris uh, is a kind of lightning rod for Scottish... Uh, many Scots uh, belief that uh, the problem is England, England's arrogance, England's sense of superiority. Uh, England is run by, you know, the upper class. And Boris kind of embodies all of that. Now, what I'm going to say now it sounds to be rather contradictory. Uh, but, but I believe that rather than say that Boris should not be going to Scotland, I believe the point, I believe that the that what he should be doing is going to Scotland much more. I think he should go to Scotland regularly. He has to embody the fact that this is a union, that this is one country, and he has to embody the fact that he is the Prime Minister of Scotland as well as England. He's the Prime Minister of the entire kingdom. And he has to start a relationship with the Scots, which are pre present. He hasn't got at all. And I believe that Nicola Sturgeon is extremely vulnerable. Her uh, track record is disastrous uh, in terms of COVID. She's had a worse record in terms of deaths in care homes. She's been even, she's been much slower than uh, England in rolling out the vaccine. She is vulnerable on a number of counts and she needs somebody to make the case. And I believe that rather than run away uh, and but by saying, you know, B Boris should run away from this uh, because he is the problem and, you know, he should keep a low profile. On the contrary, uh, he is the person who has to lance his own boil, if you see what I mean. And I believe that he could do that uh, if he was shrewd, if he left behind his English upper class schoolboy bluster, which I'm sure grates on the Scots even more than it grates on many people in England. And if he was actually shrewd and played to the to what Scots actually need, which is to show them uh, and to, to give them a proper opposition uh, to Nicola Sturgeon, which at the moment the Conservative Party just doesn't provide. What do you reckon, uh, Steve Richards? Uh, could Boris Johnson actually win this fight? I mean, it's an interesting article too by Kate Maltby saying he turns everything into a competition. Uh, I think he is the wrong person emphatically to make the argument. But this is a problem. I mean, he is the British Prime Minister. So if not him, who? The same applied to David Cameron, if you remember when the referendum happened in Scotland. Uh, he kept well clear on the whole of the campaign because he was counterproductive, which sort of shows the scale of the problem, which is that England has moved far away from Scotland rather than Scotland moving far away from England. It was England that voted for Brexit, which people in Scotland tell me has been a huge wrench in parts of Scotland, of course, which voted to stay in the European uh, Union. And some people tell me it's like when Margaret Thatcher imposed the poll tax on Scotland a year before England and the Tory party, to some extent, is still recovering from that. However, there's one thing that I do agree with Melanie about. Whenever I hear Nicola Sturgeon interviewed at length, sometimes at the Edinburgh Festival for more than an hour. She is one of the most persuasive politicians in the UK, except for this, ironically. So she cannot answer the question about borders between England and Scotland. And she contradicts herself in her very <laughs> persuasive arguments about staying in the European Union to avoid borders. So there are issues in terms of the substance where she's vulnerable. But the problem is the way that England has elected the likes of Cameron and Johnson to put the case. And him going up there today will help her, not him. And, and Steve, what do you make of the, the two conflicting views of Boris Johnson from people uh, who know him in the Daily Mail? Stephen Robinson saying, you know, maybe he can uh, get serious. And... Um, Kate Maltby basically saying, you know, he thrives on competition, but frankly, he's been beaten uh, by his management uh, of uh, uh, the crisis. Uh, which one do you find more persuasive? 
Well, I think it's self-evident that he has been beaten, in inverted commas, if you do see it, as he does, uh, she's right about this, as sort of a competition, um, by the virus. And he will be, I think... I mean, he has a ca capacity sometimes for self-awareness, and he will be acutely aware that he will be seen around the world as the prime minister who has presided over this nightmarish death toll. But again, it's a bit like the independence thing. There is a case, it would be wrong, but I think it might happen, that if the vaccine is a success and Britain is, in inverted commas, out of this in some form uh, by the summer autumn, that people will be forgiving of the calamitous errors he has been personally associated with. Uh, it happened with the Falklands War, when all that was remembered was Margaret Thatcher's victory, not her culpability as to how it all started. So I think he is personally responsible and has been shown wholly inadequate in response to this nightmare. Um, but he could still get away with it. Melanie, what do you reckon uh, to the Prime Minister's uh, powers of transformation, if you like? You were saying you wanted a more serious, less uh, English uh, posh boy approach from Boris Johnson. Uh, do you think he's actually capable of delivering that? I haven't seen any evidence of it. Um, uh, I would like to think that he was. He's certainly got the intelligence to understand the problem, but the problem is him. Um, but um, uh, I think what Steve has said is, is correct. Uh, you know, if if the vaccine uh, program in Britain is so successful that the pandemic is uh, suppressed uh, reasonably quickly without an enormously increased loss of life still to come, uh, then he will be forgiven. People will say, well, you know, this was a terrible dilemma that all prime ministers and presidents have faced. And, you know, uh, at least Britain did the vaccine thing really well. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, the way the vaccine is developing and, and the very high levels of uh, infection that remain and death and disaster and so on, um, it looks more, more, more troubling than that. Um, but the issue of whether Boris can actually, you know, can a leopard change his spots? Well, probably not. Um, and Boris, I think, will be always the victim of circumstances which he can't really control in terms of his innate uh, boosterishness, his, his bullishness, uh, his joie de vivre, um, his irrepressible uh, proclivity to make jokes and to do puns and all that, which grates at a time like this. Uh, but it depends. It depends on ex ex externals and what might happen. Great to talk to you both. Thank you very much indeed for your time.